Hello everyone, this is Maurizio, editor-in-chief of Power Electronics uh, News. Today I am here at PCIM, showing in Nuremberg, Germany, and I have the pleasure to be here at the Wurt uh, booth with Mike Hanghart, author of QSpice at Corvo. Hi Mike, how thank you, you for your time. Good to see you again. Good to see you, how are you? Well, but I might get a second opinion. How is going PCIM? Mm -hmm. It's going well? Uh, it's, uh, I am delighted to tell you the truth. There's been a lot of interest. Um, uh, I've, I've spoke to uh, maybe 150 people. I was, I was uh, wow. very happy with all the interest here. I was busy the whole time. If a, tr a trade show is not good if you sit there and look at everyone else there. Good. But I was you talking. are doing a great job with QSpice. So, and I Thank have you. prepared a couple of questions for all right. you. Okay? Uh, so the first one is, uh, so uh, QSpice, so you introduced the new model generator in, uh, in QSpice. So what uh, inspired you to develop this uh, new tool? So how uh, does it change the way uh, that uh, engineers uh, are doing in the circuit simulation as well? So tell me more. Okay, well the model generator started out as something that I'd written as part of a side business. I used to have a side business of making power MOSFET models for various manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I usually made those models by hand, knowing what the different parameters did and setting up test fixtures, and it was rather laborious to make a model. So I tried to automate a lot of it. I wrote this fairly simple routine that would digitize the data sheet curves and then fit the um, have fit the simulated data to the data sheet by doing a this kind of crude Manhattan meander through parameter space to match the uh, points, and um, you know it would give me a very good starting point to finish the thing by hand. But it always had a little bit of an error in it; it never matched the points quite right. And you know I wasn't shocked by that because you know I had this. You know, I implemented the theory for this thing just one afternoon, and you know, it, 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 if you go to school, that's not the way you would have done that. I just had this sloppy routine, and uh, so I kept it kind of quiet that this routine existed. It was useful for me, but I kept its existence quiet. Then, one day, I looked at it, maybe a year later, and I realized it was just a typo in the code. Mm -hmm. There was nothing wrong with the routine. It may not have been the very fastest one, but we'll still find the model in less than a millisecond. So it was good and robust and effective. And then we had a very nice tool for making a model for, off of a data sheet, and we decided to include it with QSpice because it was so useful. One of the challenges in, uh, in simulation has been the lack of uh, accurate uh, models for newly uh, released uh, uh, components. So how uh, QSpice new modeling tool address uh, this gap? So what in particular, what role does uh, datasheet based modeling play in uh, improving the, the simulation process? Well, the data sheet is largely a contract between the manufacturer and the designer that the part is going to work like that. So I make a model that follows the contract. Mm. And, you know, that's fair. That should work. The uh, characteristics that will be matched will be the RDS on, the output characteristics. Uh, so you have both the, uh, both the saturation and linear regions model, triad region. It will match the body diode over temperature, and it will model the gate charge. So you can make this model. It takes a couple of minutes. I may have shown it to you at one time or another how to run the yep. thing. And you have a model that will tell you whether or not that product will run in your circuit or not. So, QSpice supports also high-speed analog uh, simulation alongside uh, digital logic. So, what advantages does this uh, mixed mode uh, capability bring to modern hardware design, especially when we are talking about uh, software defined? Oh, well, look, so the, what it does, it lets you bring an arbitrarily large amount of digital logic to a spice mm. simulation, and, you know, a good spice simulation, yeah. a high-speed spice. So if you're going to do software defined or a digital controller, I can't imagine a better platform than QSpice because you can just type in the, the routine, it will compile your C++ code to uh, native Intel op codes, optimized op codes, and your digital routine in, in QSpice will actually evaluate faster than it does in the hardware. So looking, uh, looking forward, looking ahead, Mike, so what futures or capabilities uh, are you most excited uh, to bring into, into QSpice? How do, how do you see AI also? How do you envision QSpice uh, in response to the trends like AI-driven uh, design? 
Well, okay, let's talk about AI. Um, I am actually a fan of this Harvard uh, professor who's a computational theorist, uh, Leslie Valancourt. He wrote this book that really formed my opinion on AI. The book's called Probably Approximately Correct, which is a technical term in AI, which you know, PAC theory means whether or not it's machine learnable. The book is a novel length review article, or serves as a novel length review article of AI. So one thing that you need to realize is that I'm doing numerical methods in QSpice, and numerical methods is part of AI. So it, from, a, what I, from my best understand, academic understanding of what AI is, QSpice is AI, and it certainly does evaluate the behavior of a circuit faster than a human being can. Now that's not the sort of AI that I would expect a responsible journalist to be looking for. You're probably looking for all the exuberance in AI, and I, you know, I'm not really wrapped up in that. You know, and and maybe I'm, you know, I, I kind of see a lot of this exuberance as uh, it can talk. It it must be satient. Well, I don't. I'm not drawn into that. Uh, I don't think that Turing's test for intelligence is, has merit. Okay, I don't. I, you know, it, it may have made sense because it was far enough off in the future, but I don't think it's sentient. And one thing about this book, which is completely for my opinion, a Valancourt's book, it's actually a. Um, um, uh, he's basically arguing that to understand AI, you, the, the point of AI would be to understand how life formed. How did amino acids? You know, what algorithms were used to, to turn amino acids into life. And so he doesn't differentiate between artificial intelligence and intelligence. It's just intelligence. And I don't, and I'm going to go a little bit beyond what he actually says in words, but the, it's hinted, how can you understand intelligence without understanding life? Mm. And if you have one theory that covers both, you can probably convince yourself that you understand both of them, but I don't think you'd understand one without the other. So anyway, that's my opinion on AI, and while I would encourage AI people to solve that problem, I will, in the meanwhile, work on getting QSpice to continue to solve circuits faster than a human being can. Thank you, Mike. All right. Thanks a lot. It has been a great conversation, and see you, see you next. It, it's great to see you again, Maurizio. Likewise. See you next. Right. Take All care. Right. Take care. Thanks, thanks for watching.